Level zero. At level zero, there's nothing dramatic to see. Nuclear plants are just doing their job, quietly generating electricity that keeps our lights on, our laptops charged, and our coffee machines running. In fact, for most of us, nuclear power is so uneventful, it fades into the background. You don't look at a glowing lamp and think, wow, thank you, uranium. Here's the twist, though. Nuclear energy is actually one of the safest large-scale power sources we've ever used. Compared to coal or oil, it causes far fewer deaths per unit of electricity. No choking smog, no endless carbon emissions, just steady, reliable energy. At level zero, nuclear power looks like the hero of the story. But beneath the concrete domes and cooling towers lies a truth most people forget. This calm is balancing on the edge of something extraordinary. Inside those reactors, atoms are being split in a process releasing temperatures hotter than the surface of the sun. Everything depends on flawless systems and constant vigilance. So level zero is the calm before the storm, the quiet hum of progress where nothing has gone wrong. Yet, because history shows it only takes one mistake to climb to the next level. Level one. At level one, we're not talking about meltdowns or radioactive wastelands. This is the nuclear equivalent of a car's check engine light. Something doesn't look quite right, but it's not exactly a crisis. Maybe a sensor trips, a valve doesn't close properly, or an operator notices the numbers on a screen are wobbling out of range. Engineers call this an anomaly. To the public, it usually means nothing at all. The plant keeps running, nobody's evacuated, and the lights stay on. Think of it like your smoke detector chirping in the middle of the night. Not because of smoke, but because the battery is low. Annoying? Yes, dangerous? Not really. Still, it gets your attention, and if you ignore it long enough, that tiny beep can become a very real problem. That's the point of level one. It's a warning stage. The system's caught something, but the consequences didn't spill beyond the plant walls. No harm, no headlines. But here's the catch. Every major nuclear disaster began with little things. Alarms, warnings, strange readings, just like this. And when those early signs go unheeded, the climb to level two begins. Level two. At level two, things are no longer just a blinking light on a control panel. This is when an accident crosses the line from strange to serious. A small release of radiation may occur, but it's contained, measured, and not considered dangerous to the public. Still, it's a wake-up call. One example comes from the world of medical radiation therapy. In the 1990s, patients in Costa Rica and Panama were accidentally overdosed due to calibration errors. These were small-scale incidents, but the consequences for those affected were very real. Radiation, even in small doses, leaves its mark. Inside nuclear plants, level 2 events can mean localized contamination, a worker exposed during maintenance or a minor leak in a storage facility. Officials will insist it's under control, and often they're right, but it still rattles nerves. Because radiation is invisible, you can't smell it, touch it, or see it. The only signs come later, on Geiger counters or in medical reports. Think of level 2 like a small kitchen fire. It doesn't burn the house down, but it fills the room with smoke and makes you wonder just how safe you really are. And history shows that many disasters don't start with explosions. They start with incidents, just like this. Because once radiation steps outside containment, the climb to level 3 begins. Level 3. At level 3, nuclear accidents move from technical glitches into real contamination events. This is when radiation escapes the plant and lingers in the environment, forcing authorities to admit the problem exists. It's not yet a full-blown catastrophe, but for those nearby, it can change everything. A classic example comes from the Kaishtim disaster of 1957. Though it was officially rated level 6 later, it started in level 3 territory. A cooling system failed inside a nuclear waste tank, leading to an explosion that spread radiation across local villages. At first, officials said nothing. Families kept farming, drinking water, and raising children in contaminated soil. By the time the truth surfaced, tens of thousands had already been exposed. This is the unsettling hallmark of level 3. The contamination may be localized, but it's measurable. Geiger counters click higher, livestock get sick, and people feel the effects without knowing why. And because radiation is invisible, the danger often goes unnoticed until it's too late. Sometimes level 3 is compounded by secrecy. Governments have been known to downplay or even hide these incidents, hoping the problem will vanish quietly. But radiation doesn't keep secrets. It seeps into rivers, soil, and bodies, leaving a trail that can't be erased. At this stage, the damage is real, but it's also a crossroads. With immediate action, it can be managed. Without it, the situation escalates fast. And history shows that when local contamination isn't stopped in time, it doesn't just remain a serious incident. It becomes an accident with consequences far beyond the fence line. Level 4. At level 4, the risk no longer stays behind concrete walls. 
Radiation escapes far enough that the public is at risk. And suddenly the problem isn't just for engineers, it's for entire communities. A well-known case is the Windscale Fire of 1957 in the United Kingdom. Deep inside a reactor built to produce plutonium, the graphite core caught fire. For three days, flames burned inside the plant, releasing radioactive iodine into the atmosphere. The government tried to contain the panic, but quietly, they ordered hundreds of thousands of liters of milk from nearby farms to be destroyed. Families were never told the full truth, and estimates suggest the fire may have caused hundreds of long-term cancer cases. This is what makes Level 4 chilling. It's not just an industrial accident, it's when everyday life becomes contaminated. The food you eat, the air you breathe, even the ground under your feet may carry traces of radiation. Suddenly, the invisible threat feels closer than ever. Scientifically, Level 4 is defined as an accident with local consequences. The contamination might not spread across entire countries, but it's bad enough that protective measures like evacuation, restrictions on food, or medical monitoring are unavoidable. Level 4 reminds us that nuclear accidents don't need explosions to be devastating. A slow-burning fire or an unnoticed release can leave scars just as lasting as a dramatic meltdown. And here's the terrifying part. Once radiation touches the public, fear takes on a life of its own. Because the leap from a local consequence to a wider one is only one step away. Level 5. At level 5, nuclear disasters break through local boundaries and become events that entire nations, and sometimes the world, can't ignore. Radiation spreads far enough to trigger international concern, and containment no longer feels guaranteed. The clearest example? Three Mile Island, 1979. In Pennsylvania, a mechanical failure combined with human error led to a partial meltdown inside Reactor 2. Cooling water levels dropped, exposing the core. Radioactive gases were released, and though officials insisted the amount was small, panic spread like wildfire. Residents fled, unsure if they were escaping invisible death. Here's the key. No one died directly from the accident, but its psychological and political impact was enormous. It shattered public confidence in nuclear power in the United States. Construction of new plants slowed dramatically, and anti-nuclear protests gained momentum worldwide. In many ways, the fear itself was the true fallout. Scientifically, Level 5 is defined as an accident with wider consequences. That means radioactive releases large enough to require protective measures beyond the immediate area. That the situation is under control, even when it barely is. Three Mile Island proved that you don't need mass casualties to create a nuclear disaster. Fear, mistrust, and uncertainty can spread faster than radiation itself. And if Level 5 showed how fragile trust can be, Level 6 shows what happens when the fallout is so great, denial and cover-ups are no longer possible. Level 6. At Level 6, a nuclear disaster is no longer just frightening, it's transformational. Entire regions are poisoned, people are permanently displaced, and the environment itself becomes a victim for decades, maybe centuries. The most infamous example here is the Kishtim disaster of 1957 in the Soviet Union. Hidden deep inside the Ural Mountains at the Mayak plutonium facility, a cooling system on a storage tank failed. Without cooling, heat built up until the tank exploded, blasting radioactive material across nearly 20,000 square miles. Villages were evacuated quietly, families vanished overnight, and maps were altered to erase the disaster from history. But the radiation couldn't be erased. Over 270,000 people were exposed. Rivers, fields, and forests carried contamination for decades. And because the Soviet Union buried the truth, generations lived on poisoned land without ever knowing why cancers and sickness spread through their communities. Level 6 is defined as a serious accident, major releases of radioactive material requiring long-term countermeasures. That means exclusion zones, mass relocations, and lands declared unsafe for human life. It's the point where the damage outlasts governments, economies, and even memory. Unlike Three Mile Island, which shook confidence, Level 6 events reshape entire landscapes. They're disasters that don't just end when the fires burn out. They echo through history. And the terrifying truth? Level 6 is still not the peak. Because Level 7 is where the scale officially maxes out. The place reserved for the world's most infamous nuclear nightmares. Level 7. At Level 7, we reach the peak of the official nuclear disaster scale, the category reserved for the worst accidents humanity has ever seen. These aren't just crises, they're world-changing events that leave scars across continents and echo for generations. The first example, Chernobyl, 1986. A late-night safety test turned catastrophic when Reactor 4 exploded, ripping the core open and hurling radioactive material high into the atmosphere. The plume spread across Europe, contaminating farmland, forests, and cities hundreds of miles away. 
Firefighters rushed in without protective gear, many dying within weeks from acute radiation sickness. Pripyat, once a thriving city, was abandoned overnight, left frozen in time. To this day, the Chernobyl exclusion zone remains one of the most contaminated areas on Earth. The second, Fukushima, 2011. Triggered not by human error, but by nature itself, a magnitude 9.0 earthquake and a towering tsunami. Flooded backup generators failed, cooling systems shut down, and three reactors melted down. Explosions tore through the facility and plumes of radioactive steam rose into the sky, broadcast live across the globe. Over 150,000 people were evacuated, entire towns left behind, and the cleanup will stretch on for decades. Level 7 disasters are catastrophic by every definition. Massive releases of radiation, severe environmental damage, and profound psychological fallout. They change how the world views nuclear energy. They inspire new safety laws, new fears, and new generations who grow up knowing names like Chernobyl and Fukushima as synonyms for disaster. And yet, even at the maximum level, we know this scale isn't the end. Because if history can reach level 7, we can still imagine what happens beyond it. Level 8. At level 8, we step beyond the disasters humanity has already endured. Multiple nuclear failures at once. Picture this. A massive solar storm slams into Earth, frying power grids across continents. Suddenly, dozens of nuclear reactors lose cooling systems simultaneously. Backup generators kick in, but how long before fuel runs out? Across entire regions, reactor cores begin overheating, spent fuel pools start boiling, and containment lines are pushed past their limits. Now imagine this happening not in one country, but across an entire continent. Fallout clouds drift across borders, spreading radiation over farmland, cities, and water supplies. Crops die, trade halts, and millions are forced to evacuate. This isn't pure science fiction. Experts have warned for years about the vulnerability of nuclear plants to natural disasters, cyber attacks, and even rising sea levels. A single tsunami crippled Fukushima. What happens when dozens of facilities are hit at once? At level 8, the phrase accident with consequences no longer applies. This isn't an accident, it's collapse. National governments buckle under the weight of mass evacuations, economic breakdown, and widespread fear. The very systems designed to protect us become the engines of chaos. Level 8 is speculative, but not impossible. It's the level where nuclear power stops being a crisis for one nation and becomes a regional extinction event. And if entire regions can fall to radiation. The next level asks the question, what happens when the whole world does? Level 9? At level 9, the nuclear nightmare is no longer contained by borders. This is the level where disasters stack, where nuclear power plant meltdowns, reactor failures, and even nuclear weapon detonations overlap into a single, unstoppable storm. Imagine a major war breaking out, not with one bomb, but with dozens. Cities are destroyed in seconds, but the true horror arrives afterward. Radioactive dust carried by the winds. At the same time, already weakened nuclear power plants, damaged by conflict or cyber attack, begin to fail, adding fuel to the fire. Suddenly, the world is drowning in radiation. Food chains collapse. Oceans, already strained by warming, become tainted with radioactive particles. Crops fail, livestock die, and clean water becomes more precious than gold. Even countries untouched by bombs or meltdowns suffer, as fallout circles the globe. Scientists have long warned of a concept called nuclear winter, a scenario where widespread nuclear detonations darken the skies with soot and ash, blocking sunlight for months or even years. Combine that with radioactive fallout and humanity faces famine, sickness, and social collapse on a scale we've never seen. At level 9, civilization as we know it teeters on the edge. Nations turn inward, fighting to protect dwindling safe zones. Refugees flee not from war, but from poisoned skies and ruined soil. The global economy breaks under the weight of chaos and trust between nations shatters completely. This isn't just disaster, it's a worldwide crisis of survival. And yet, even here, there's still one more level. Because if nuclear disaster can engulf the world, the final question is chilling. What if it erases us completely? Level 10. At level 10, nuclear disaster doesn't just threaten nations, regions, or even continents. It threatens the survival of humanity itself. Picture this. Decades of unchecked conflict, climate change, and fragile infrastructure collide. A global war triggers hundreds of nuclear detonations. Cities vanish in fireballs, but the greater horror comes after. Nuclear winter. Chai, soot, and radioactive dust rise into the stratosphere, blotting out the sun. Crops fail across the globe. Temperatures plunge. For years, the Earth is locked in a twilight of famine and radiation. At the same time, nuclear power plants left unmaintained during the collapse begin to melt down one by one. 
spent fuel pools boil dry, releasing yet more radiation into oceans, rivers, and skies already poisoned. There's no recovery effort, no engineers, no firefighters, no governments, just silence. Humanity fractures into scattered survivors. Food and clean water are scarce, societies collapse, and future generations inherit a toxic wasteland. Entire ecosystems vanish, with species erased not just by heat or cold, but by radiation woven into the very fabric of the planet. Level 10 isn't about numbers or safety scales. It's the ultimate erasure. Civilization, culture, history, all of it reduced to glowing ruins and whispers on the wind. The Earth itself would survive, but the story of humanity could end in ash. And the most haunting truth of all? Everything needed for level 10 already exists. Right now, the only question is whether we choose to avoid it or stumble into it.